Hello and welcome to our new lecture of Sons and Lovers. This lecture is going to discuss chapter 13 and 14, which are entitled as Baxter Do's and the Release. Without further ado, let's get started. Paul and Baxter Do's issue. Paul is in a bar with some friends when Baxter Do's enters, Clara's husband from whom she has been separated for years. Paul offers him a drink since he is the supervisor at Jordan's, but Doze refuses. Doze begins to talk about Paul being at the theatre with a tart, and Paul is about to leave when Doze says something that causes Paul to throw a glass of beer in his face. Doze rushes at Paul, but he is held back and he is thrown out of the bar. Doze rushes at Paul, but is held back and he is thrown out of the bar. He tells Clara what has happened, and she does not seem surprised, saying that Baxter is a law sort of a person. She wants Paul to carry a gun or a knife for protection, and is angry when he refuses. One day at the factory, Paul runs into Doze. Doze threatens him while he carries on with his work. Finally, Doze grabs Paul's arm and Thomas Jordan comes out of his office to see what is happening. He tells Doze to leave and when he does not, grab his arm. Doze jerks his elbow and sends Jordan flying backward through a spring door and down half a flight of steps. Jordan is not hurt, but he dismisses Doze. Love versus Logic Paul discusses love with his mother and says that perhaps something is the matter with him and that he cannot love. She says that he has not met the right woman and he replies that he will never meet the right woman while she is alive. Clara asks him about the future and he tells her he will go abroad and then come back to be with his mother. He tells her not to ask about the future, but just to be with him now, and they surrender to the passion. She does not want to divorce from Baxter, and therefore cannot belong to him completely. They both realize that they will go separate ways. One evening, they pass Doe's as they are walking, and Paul does not realize who it is until after they have passed him. And Clara says it was Baxter. Another night, some time later, Paul is walking alone and encounters Doe's, waiting for him. They fight and Paul is hurt. He struggles to get himself home and goes to sleep, and his mother is there to take care of him when he awakes. While he is ill, Clara and then Miriam come to visit him, and he tells his mother that he does not care about them. After he's better, he goes on a holiday with his friend Newton and arranges to meet his mother at Annie's house in Sheffield. When he arrives there, Annie opens the door and he realizes that his mother is ill. They discover that she has a tumor, tumor يعني مرض خبيث, and Paul goes to see her doctor in Nottingham. He agrees to come to Sheffield, looks at the tumor, and says that he may be able to cure it. Mrs. Morell stays in Sheffield for two months, and then the family hires a motor car to drive her home, at which she is very glad. In this chapter, Paul admits that his mother does not share in all aspects of his life. He feels that the incident with Doe's in the bar belongs to this life, because he feels mortified at the thought of telling her about it. However, he does not like to have to conceal anything from his mother. We can see, however, that his mother is still the most important to him through his thoughts as he tries to make his way home after his fight with Doze. He thinks over and over again that he must make it home to his mother. أول شخص جاء على باله هو والدته عندما شعر بالألم وشعر بالوحدة وشعر بالغبن والظلم والعنف ضده. Paul reflections on love recall his older brother William's complaints when he was engaged. Paul thinks that he loves Clara when he is with her, is indifferent towards her when not with her. 
and often turns her out when she talks to him. Baxter does a new friend. Dr. Ansel tells Paul that Baxter Doe's is in the Fever Hospital in Sheffield, and Paul decides to visit him. Paul tells Doe's that he can recommend him a recovery home in Seathorpe. He tells Clara that he has been to visit Doe's in the hospital, and she becomes upset and realizes that she has treated her husband badly. She goes to see him to try to make amends, but at first they do not get on well. Paul also visits Doe's a few times, and the two men begin to develop a sort of friendship. Paul does not spend much time with Clara now, because he is occupied with his mother's illness. Mrs. Morell gets gradually worse, and Paul spends much time caring for her. When Clara reminds him that it is her birthday, he takes her to the seashore, but spends most of the time talking about his mother and how he wishes that she would die. The next time he sees Doze, Paul mentions that he has been with Clara, and this is the first mention the two men make of Clara. He tells Doze that he will go abroad after his mother dies. Time passes and Mrs. Morris stays the same. Miriam writes to Paul and he visits her. She kisses him believing he will be comforted, but he does not want that kind of comfort from her, and finally manages to get away. Paul and Annie share the nursing of their mother. They begin to feel as if they can no longer go on, and Paul decides to give her an overdose of morphia to put an end to all their suffering. He crushes all the pills they have into his mother's milk, and she drinks it obediently, believing it to be a new sleeping drug. She lasts through the night and finally dies in the morning. Paul كان يرى مدى ألم والدته لذلك قرر أن يعطيها جرعة أكبر من مسكن الآلام ولكن هذه الجرعة كانت كبيرة بحيث أدت إلى وفاتها Doze is now in the convalescent home and Paul goes to see him again and suggests that he has plenty of life left in him and that he should try to get Clara back so that he can regain something of his former life the next day he and Clara brings Doze to his lodging and Paul leaves them together. This chapter is an excellent example of the way that the novel is not always narrated in chronological order. لم تكن منظمة بالتتابع زمني صحيح أو تتابع زمني طبيعي بل كانت هناك أحداث تسبق أحداث أخرى ثم تلحق بها فيما بعد. Since the first episode in which Paul visits Baxter Doze in the hospital actually occurs before Mrs. Morrell is taken home, an episode which is included in the previous chapter. Mrs. Morrell's desire to be with Paul is so strong that he tells Clara he believes she refuses to die so that she can stay with him. And she looks at me and she wants to stay with me. She has got such a will. It seems as if she would never go, never. Even though he says he wishes she would die, Paul's strong bond to his mother remains. He feels as though a part of him were dying also. After she dies, Paul still feels this connection. Looking at her, he felt he could never, never let her go. Morel shows his vulnerability after his wife dies when he waits up for Paul to return home so that he is not alone in the house with the dead body. Paul, who had considered Morel to be fearless, is taken by surprise. Here we are with the important quotations from the work. The first quotation states, I don't want to marry. I don't want ever to marry. And if you were not going to marry, it is no good going on. This is said by Paul to Miriam when he tries to break up with her, telling her that he's not willing to marry anymore, and he cannot stay with her, and it's, there is no point for going on if there is something wrong with their relation. Apart from this quotation, I have mentioned two quotations within the lecture, so you may refer to them as well as part of the important quotations of this lecture. 
This is the end of our lecture and I hope to see you in the next one, which is the last lecture of this year. And I wish you all the best.